So now we're going to deal with two other laws, um, more minor in honors chemistry than you'll see in uh, AP or at college when you study gases again. So first let's talk about Dalton's law of partial pressures. Now Dalton's law is actually pretty easy to understand if you think about it in terms of uh, uh, terms of other things, and I'll explain that and give you a, f a few real-world examples in a second. So what Dalton's Law says is the pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the pressures of the individual gases. So in other words, uh, like air pressure. Air pressure is one atmosphere. That one atmosphere of pressure comes from the fact that air is made up of CO2, and O2 and N2 and it's got some helium and some argon and a whole bunch of other gases that make up this mixture. When you add the pressure of all of these gases up, all of that is equal to one atmosphere. Okay, So the actual formula for Dalton's Law is P total, meaning the total air pressure, is equal to the pressure of gas A plus the pressure of gas B plus the pressure of gas C plus however many different gases you have. You just add up all the pressures. Very, very simple. <clears throat> now, if we want to calculate a little bit differently, uh, like, let's say we wanted to calculate one particular gas in this. So I know that the air pressure is one atmosphere. I want to know what the pressure of only the oxygen in that mixture is. This is the formula we're going to use, where PA is the pressure of the gas, Oops. where this is the pressure of your gas. This, obviously, is the total pressure. And this is what is called the mole fraction. And the mole fraction is the fraction of the moles of, the fraction of, the moles of one gas is of the entire thing. So it's a fraction. So for example, let's say I had a total of um, 20 moles of gas. I add up all the pressures of all of these gases up here and it comes out to be 20 moles. And I know that oxygen represents 4 moles of that 20. Well, how do I find mole fraction? Simple. 4 divided by 20 is equal to let's see, that's a fifth, so 0.20. Now, something you need to know about mole fraction, notice it's not a fraction, it's a decimal. Didn't give myself enough space there, decimal. Okay, that's the key to mole fractions, they're not actual fractions, they're actually decimals. So you never write it like this, you always write it like this. Okay, so it makes the math a lot easier down the road. And I know we keep calling it a fraction, but don't ever write a mole fraction as a fraction. Always write it as a decimal. Now, a couple things about mole fraction that you need to remember is, like I said, one, always decimal. And number two, it's always less than one. Okay, if you think about it, this is logical. Think about it as a percentage. Let's say you're eating a pizza, and there are eight slices on the pizza. You can't have more than eight slices. Like, you can't say, oh yeah, I sat down last night and had nine slices of pizza out of that pizza pie. It's not possible, okay? So you can't have more than 100% of the pie. You, unless you had, obviously, two pies, and then you have, can't have a, more than 100% of two pies, okay? so. You, it, the fraction is always less, has to be less than one. So in this case, two. So even if something is 99.99%, it's not one. It's not a hundred, okay? If I had pure oxygen, then the mole fraction of oxygen in pure oxygen would be one. It can't be greater than one, okay? So keep that in mind of these two things about mole fractions. We don't really deal with mole fractions a lot during gases, but we will deal with them a lot during um uh, solutions when we get there in a short time. Okay, so this is all I'm going to do with Dalton's Law, so let's talk about now a different law. Let's talk about Graham's Law. Graham's Law of Diffusion. Uh, first of all, let's define diffusion. Diffusion is the movement of gas molecules from a high concentration to a low concentration. Anyone who has ever been near a locker room knows about diffusion. Because you know, you can always tell when, the, when you're getting close to the boys' locker room or close to the gym, because they have very distinct odors. Now remember what I told you all the way back at the beginning of this unit is, um, 
gases, solids and liquids don't have an odor. It's the gas that we smell. Gases fly up our nose, taking particles with them, and those particles are what we're smelling. So when you get near the gym, you can smell cologne, you can smell body odor, you can smell feet, you can smell sweat, you can smell all sorts of things coming at you. And all of that are those gases that are flowing towards you, and they're moving from an area of high concentration in the locker room to an area of low concentration, the hallway. Uh, girls' locker room has the same problem. You always know when the girls' locker room door is open because all of a sudden you get hit with all of the uh, perfume and, and deodorants and all sorts of stuff. It all comes flowing out because gases naturally want to equalize themselves across a space. So an, a nicer, more pleasant example is baking cookies. Okay, You open the front door of the house and bam, you're hit with that smell of baking food because it has moved from the area of high concentration in the kitchen to an area of low concentration everywhere else in the house. Right. Now, this is a little bit different. Effusion and diffusion tend to get mixed up. They are very similar to each other. Effusion is also the movement of gas from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, but the difference is now you're moving through a small hole. Okay? So, for example, I have a balloon and I put a small hole in the balloon and the gas begins to escape through that hole. We call that gas effusing. Okay, so that gas, and it's especially important when I have a mixture of gases. So if I have a mixture of gases, now I can really talk about movement through the hole. Okay? So, for example, like I said, helium leaking out of a balloon. Now, the key to Graham's Law is this statement right here. Okay, this is what Graham's Law basically is going to define for us is what uh, what we see is heavier gases always move slower and my example is always the sumo wrestler running um, you know if you were to run a race against a sumo wrestler I know some of you may be really fast and some of you may be slow but no matter how slow you are I guarantee you're slower than the sumo wrestler okay because the heavier a gas is the slower it's going to move to move. So let's take that balloon example again. Let's say I had multiple gases in a balloon, like air. Let's say I take air and put it in a balloon. I blow up a balloon, I stick a tiny pinhole in it, and I allow those gases to leak out. Well, the lightest gas that's going to, that the first gas that's going to leak out is going to be the lightest gas, which is going to be the helium. And, you know, and then oxygen, or nitrogen, and oxygen, and all that. And the last gas that's going to leave that balloon is going to be the heaviest gas, regardless of what that gas may be. So if that gas is carbon dioxide with a weight of 40 Four, you know, carbon dioxide at a weight of 44 is going to move a lot slower than oxygen at a weight of 32, which is going to move slower than it's going to move slower than helium with a weight of four. Okay, and it's going to move proportionally slower. So now let's look at the actual formula for Graham's law. Oop, let me erase that. This is the actual formula for Graham's Law. R is rate. Okay, so like um, meters per second or moles per minute, whatever it happens to be. It's what it, you have to look at the problem. The problem always tells you what the rate is. M is your molar mass, meaning your weight from the periodic table. Okay. So notice that the rate of a gas is inverse to its mass. So the heavier the gas, the slower it moves. The lighter the gas, the faster it moves. And so you can find the relative rates of two gases when you have the molecular weights. Now what they typically will do is they'll say things like, an unknown gas is placed into a tube with methane. If the methane moves at a rate of blah, 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 and the unknown gas moves at a rate of da, 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 what's the weight of the gas? What's the weight of the unknown gas? Well, if I have a rate one, and I have a rate two, and I have the mass of one of them, I can find the mass of the third. The, Graham's law is super easy. It is about plug and chug, because this is the only formula we're going to use in this class. So all you, you're going to always be given three of the four factors and have to find the other one. Okay, So they're very, very simple. Again, I'm not going to do any example problems right now, because we don't deal with them that much. They're mostly theoretical. So be prepared to compare, um, be able to compare gases. Uh, theoretically. So like I said, through, through examples.
I don't really, there's some examples on the review sheet with some calculations, but mostly I'm going to make you do it um, in words. So I have methane, predict a gas that would be able to move faster than methane through blah, 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 blah. And that's what you're going to do, okay? And that's Dalton's law and Graham's law for gases.